lot of experimentation. Um, you know, we have, we have examples of stencil art of various sorts that goes back like 35 millennia. Um, you know, we have, you know, hand stencils, prehistoric hand stencils. Um, we have stencil art depicting ancient machines um, from, from a galaxy far, far away. Um, and, you know, it really, it, it can be applied in so many different ways. This is a dimensional stencil piece that I did um, last year. And it's kind of, I, I like this because it's, it's a little bit of a microcosm of design thinking. And it represents what, what's fascinating about stencils, I think, um, in that the medium informs the aesthetic. Um, I'm, I'm carving this directly into the pages of a book, right? And so obviously the counters are gonna fall out unless I leave bridges. Um, and so I, I turn, you know, a swashy stencil, or excuse me, a swashy script into a stencil to fit the medium. And um, so you have, you know, the, the rationale behind stencil type um, in this kind of experimental form. Um, it's like a, you begin with a very utilitarian outlook um, with stencils, you know, going hundreds of years back. It's kind of an answer to the question of how to reproduce letter forms quickly and easily and accurately. Um, you have them on, you know, vehicle fleets. This is from um, Kirby Stafford, a sign painter from Kentucky, um, you know, the Phoenix Motor Speedway. Some interesting forms in here, even as simplistic as it is, like the W, um, the R, and extra bridges. Um, you see it often used in Asia to mark taxi fleets. This is a photo from Ben Mitchell um, for, with, with some Thai and some Latin. You know, it was used to, to represent a taxi co-op. This one um, I, I snapped actually in Uptown just east of here. Um, and I, so I had to include it, you know, being local. Um, you can see that the vinyl lettering has, has shrunken and fallen off. And if you look really closely, that you can see that the C is beginning to shrink a little as well. It might be falling off pretty soon. Um, these, these are from, you know, din, din stencils. It's like a veritable celebration of functionality. You know, um, these are from a stencil catalog from the 1930s. Um, I obscured a couple of swastikas actually, but I mean, you know, you, know you, have, you have stencil black letter, so yes, please. You know, I'm gonna include this anyway. <laughs> Um, more din stencils, um, yeah, not my toes. <laughs> um, these are some, some stencils from the French, the French Metro. Um, again, it's like, you know, you have signage, you're punching, punching forms out of metal. And so it's a very utilitarian mindset that, that brings you to this particular conclusion. Um, but you know, can, you can still make it pretty interesting, you know, unusual forms. Um, this one, I really love the vernacular in this one. I'm, I'm really crushing on that one. Sorry, you, you can boo, that was awful. That was really awful. I'm sorry, I won't do that again. Um, but yeah, I mean, just the, the forms, the vernacular there that really shows up, the, the breaks make it very visually interesting. And the forms are just like this odd contrast of the super heavy and then the absences of space within the letter form. Um, you get a lot, of, a lot of interesting signage with stencils um, when you're mixing scripts. One, one major benefit to this is that the person who is creating the sign doesn't have to read or write all of these scripts. You know, you can just spray it on. Um, so you have some, some Tamil, some Chinese, Latin. Um, this one, I really like this one, you know, snapped by John Pinhorn. You have this really chubby, chubby Tamil. <laughs> I really like the weight here um, and the, the textural quality of the forms. You know, it's paired with a very um, kind of a condensed Tamil and then some Latin in there. Um, thanks, John, for the image. Um, another one, this one was, was snapped by Shiva um, on a train. I really like this one because um, it really breaks up the forms to a point where, you know, you can't really read them very well, um, particularly the Hindi. Um, I, I really like also the, the number of bridges. <laughs> you see, see a lot of bridges in the O, um, you know, the, the A, obviously no crossbar. It's, it's kind of a textural thing. Um, you can also see some camera movement in the photo which means that we know that Shiva was following the rules and not using the toilet when the train was stopped. So, yeah, good points there. Um, yeah, some more, more mixed scripts from, from John Pinhorn again. Um, you know, again, with a lot, of, a lot of bridges, making things, you know, virtually unreadable, <laughs> but, but resulting in a very interesting textural quality with, with the forms, the number of bridges, the A. I really like the crossbar of the A here, the solution they worked it in there. Um, I would be remiss not to include a Duigan stencil, right? I mean, no, no talk at type kind is complete without a mention of Duigan's. Um, this is his postmaster stencil. Um, this is his modular stencil that you know can create the alphabet um, using a variety of, of 
you know, little little fractions of letter forms. Um, thanks for the image letter form archive. This is actually from the um, the book by Dorothy Abbey on his illustrative stencils um, that is being republished later this year from the Princeton University Press. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, mostly illustrations, but some type in here as well. Um, yeah, some more more fun stencils with with some tie um, that Ben Mitchell snapped here. Just really interesting, interesting forms. Interesting to see stencils used as a practical practical solution here. More more tie. I really like the rounded forms and the you know various sizes. Um, these are some stencils from Corey Holmes. And I thought um, I'd include them because his a little quote that he had when he released these really kind of embodies, I think, what, what's attractive about and interesting about stencils to us. Um, this is, you know, you can actually see these out in the, the soda store. Um, but these, you know, the modular, you know, mirroring LED matrices. And I'm going to read his quote here. Um, it's kind of humorous, but it, it really embodies it. And I quote, I really like the idea of introducing stencils into the market just at the point that they have absolutely no use or meaning anymore. So it's like, there's a sense in which stencils are ephemeral at this point. You know, there's something of an anachronism, but, um, you know, they may be anachronistic, but we don't abandon them because there's value in experimentation to be found there. Um, so these, these have been primarily function-based, but then, you know, sometimes you can prioritize form and you use the opportunity that this affords to explore. Um, you know, you can take generally, um, this is stenciletta from Delphonts. You can take generally traditional forms and then take advantage of, you know, the unusual vertical rhythm um, to, you know, with the layers, the, the diagonal bridges. Um, this one's from Shiva as well, his enemy. It's kind of a militaristic style, um, but obviously it, it abstracts it a little bit, you know, really chunky forms, does something fun with what could be a fairly traditional, fairly traditional vibe. Um, this one, of course, you know, a re revival of the the berry, the berry typefaces that are like er a really early example of of people doing a lot of really crazy stuff with stencils <laughs> that, that come from a very very functional functional background. But then, you know, you can obviously turn it into something that's really beautifully complex. Um, this is from our type. You know. um, I really like this pair of stencils from um, from Gareth Haig. This one. This one I really like the the heavy ball terminals. Um, you know, it's it's kind of a modular system here that you can take these very simple shapes that combine to make the entire alphabet really. Um, and you know, obviously punctuation and everything, but it really abstracts it. Um, Gareth has quite a talent for abstracting things and making you know really weird forms that still make sense. And I really really like that about this. Um, of course, this is what I what I set the title slide in. Beautiful type. And then his his as yet unreleased um, anodyne. Which again, it's a, a fairly traditional form, but he he takes the idea of removing parts of the basic letter form, and um, plays with it. You know, creating some very very unusual bridges, odd angles, um, things that just break up the pattern a little bit, and make it. While well, it's a fairly traditional um, form, if you step back, if you look a little closely, it's it's very intriguing, um, and there's a lot to look at there. Um, this one I got from from um, the Lublin archive here, it's a, a shot of a candy box. Um, some, this is actually not, not a true stencil style. You can see the closed loop in the B, um, but I, it was so finessed and beautiful, I, I couldn't exclude it here. Um, just lo lovely stencil style work, inspired by stencils, but not, not a literal stencil um, by Charles Dean for a candy box. So, this one, I really love um, the, the abstraction that you can get into when you're, when you're breaking up the Latin forms like this. Um, you know. This, this says orange, it's, it's black just to trick you. I should have colored it orange, but um, this is from Mika Melvis. And he, um, you know, he, he does some great work and he, he was playing with the forms here to the point where um, if, you, if you actually remove some of the forms, you know, it becomes like a lot of people wouldn't recognize these as letter forms, as Latin forms. I mean, most of the people in this room probably will, but um, it's just, you know, um, the abstraction that you can get into really playing up the, the differences and you know, removing parts of the form to create really interesting visual patterns. Um, this one, I, I really enjoy the the experimental work of Bart Volebrecht. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with his work or not, but he um, he let me use these images as long as I I made it clear that they were still works in progress. Um, yeah, they were they're like a couple of one word experiments where he's actually building the forms around the breaks as opposed to you know taking a standard form and then removing part. 
Um, you know, it's really, really an unconventional approach. I really like the, the approach on the breathe there on the left. Um, this one, this one I really love. This is, this is pretty brilliant, I think. This is from Regan Johnson. Um, it's also an in-progress typeface, um, very limited character set as of yet. It was inspired by Nebbiolo's um, Landy Echo, so the form within a form, you know, that's kind of blocking out portions of the other form. And Land Landy Echo is actually not a stencil, a stencil form, but of course the, um, the extrapolation of this, this concept turns it into a very, very fragmented form. Um, you're, you're really just hinting at the Latin form at this point, just these, these fragments, splinters almost. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. I think there's a lot of potential here that's just really beautiful and very, um, I don't know, kind of subtly evokes language. <laughs> Um, more from Bart, I really like, like this one. It's kind of like, I don't know if you've noticed, it's basically a type cooker experiment. Um, <laughs> it's like the trifecta of interesting, interesting quirks. You have a back slant, a stencil, and reverse weight. Um, and he actually turned it into real stencils. You can see um, he, he stenciled it into sand and some other things. Um, it was meant to evoke landscapes. It's an interesting experimental project. And I think, I don't think he has capitals for this yet. But, um, and th thanks to Bart for letting me use this, this image. Um, another one from Bart, I, I really love this one. I think with some open type wizardry, this could make a really incredible typeface. Again, the trifecta of quirks, um, you know, just the, the connectors, the various, the various portions of the letter form um, that are, are so abstracted that, you know, a lot of people would not be able to read this, and it's, but it's really fascinating when you put it all together and it becomes readable, you know, you step away and, it's, I don't know, fascinating stuff. I'd, I'd love to see this expanded on in the future. Some more textural stuff. Um, this is from Erin McLaughlin, a, a photo of some really fragmented Urdu. She snapped on the side of a bus. Um, I really like this because, of course, I don't read Urdu, um, but it, it creates a very interesting visual pattern. Um, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing where, you know, you can appreciate the aesthetic. And I, I think this would be difficult to read even for for an Urdu speaker or reader um, you know but it's just I really like the textural quality again the broken forms um, you know what you see with kind of abstracting it unintentionally in this case um, more another photo from Ben Mitchell this is some Burmese punched into metal um, obviously this is again from a functional functional standpoint where you're actually you know punching it into the metal requires a stencil a stencil approach um, but it's really, you know, kind of playing up the, the stencils and like the patterns, um, very visually interesting, even for those of us that don't read Burmese. <laughs> um, this one, this one I added in at the last minute. My friend, um, Danielle Evans, did this um, just this week to promote a, a workshop she did. It reads hashtag WMC wordplay. Um, and so I, I snuck this in at the last minute. And I, I thought this was really interesting because it's, it's not actually stenciled. Um, but you have the various layers of abstraction, um, you know, because you're working with, you know, an interesting medium, you know, the stencil forms, omitting portions of the form, obviously, it's very, very visually interesting. You have to look at it a couple times to read it. Um, and of course, the colorful background, the diagonal, a lot, a lot of fun to be had there. Um, and it's not, not actually stenciled, but just formed that way. Um, kind of shades of, of bifur, maybe, um, you know, and you thought layered fonts were just trending now, right? <laughs> this is from 29. Um, just, you know, beautiful stuff. Um, yeah. Then, but what I really love about, about this piece in particular is that um, it represents, you know, what, what stencil styles have become. They're no longer a functional thing. Um, they're primarily for just the, the interest we can find in the stenciled forms, removing the Latin, you know, the portions of the Latin form or, you know, not in Latins. Um, and it's like, it, you're abstracting you're experimenting, um, and it's, it really is wordplay, you know, it's, it's like, it's fun stuff. You can have so much fun with stencil forms. So I guess I just encourage everyone to embrace what's between the lines, um, you know, build, build around what's not there, build around what's, what's implied, what's abstracted, and have fun. Thank you. <laughs>